Here's a quick one on clipping instances, which is worth documenting as I keep forgetting how to do it, even though it is quite simple. Our first example is a flat ground plane with our grass object instanced to it. Just for reference, this is what our grass looks like. It's just a series of flat polygons with uh, double sided turned on. Let's say I wanted to cut a path through this, or perhaps I wanted a, a hole in the middle. This is how I would have done it before. So let's go to our instance generator. In this case, I want a hole in the middle. Uh, so I want to go from uh, 0, 0, 0, which is in the center. So from that point to our base point of each instance, get the distance from that into a gradient, out of the gradient into the weight. So by adjusting the gradient, I could punch a hole invert the values there you go that's punching a hole so I could punch a hole straight in the center of that but the problem with this is it's not a particularly nice neat tidy circle because this base position is just taking into account the origin of the object and not uh, the mesh if you like but there is a better way for now let's just take these nodes and copy them close that down and turn off the nodes Okay, the surface generator, we need to select the base grass object, not the ground, the grass, the instanced object. Now we open up the graph editor. That's just our texture and colors. Move those out of the way. Uh, let's paste what we had earlier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the gradient color out because we're just using black and white. We're just going to plug that into the clip. Now to see this, we're gonna need VPR. So let's turn that on. Not a lot happens. So the secret source to this is nothing to do with the instancing node. It is quite simply taking the world position and plugging that into the two. Let's invert these colors again. Let's invert those values. And as you can see, we now have a very nice, perfectly circle clipped object or clipped instances. Now the only thing to be aware of with this is uh, you don't get any overhang. So little bits floating over the edge uh, will be clipped. So that works really well for flat polygons, but what if you've got an object with volume? Well, there's a workaround for that as well. So let's do that for the next example. So for this next example, I'm instancing a cube in an radial array. Uh, possibly a little bit simplistic, but it'll, uh, but it'll work. Let's turn on VPR, shift click will bring up our surface editor with the correct surface selected. Let's turn this off for now. Right, so similar to the previous example. So vector in the from, world spot into the two, double click on the gradient. Now what we should see as we move the gradient is we get nicely clipped and let's flip the values. There we go, uh, and again, this one needs to be stepped. Now what you see is we've got a hollow, which we don't want, obviously, so let's close that down and let's make it double-sided. So this might be exactly what you want, but generally what we wanna do is we wanna cap the ends so we don't see any shading inside. We're gonna use a fake Boolean on this object. Uh, we're gonna swap out uh, one material for another. And we're going to do that using the switch node. So let's go to switch. I think this is relevant for 2018 and 19, certainly. Uh, 2015, I can't remember. And there's other ways, other ways to switch in earlier versions. But for now, uh, we're going to take the, the surface side into our switch object, into our switch node. And we're going to have to guess a little bit. So this true would be the inside and the false will be the outside. We don't need any principled sort of shading for this. So we're just going to use the, uh, the standard node. So let's plug the material into the true. And lumin luminosity, because this is basically a fake Boolean effect, we're going to go luminosity 100%, diffuse zero, and we're going to zero out Oops, we're going to zero out 
all the other effects. And we can choose a color of choice for our inside. Let's just take the texturing a little step further. Uh, we're going to go to the instance node, instance info. Um, we're going to get a random, random scalar and a, let's go for a multiply node. Multiply. So we're going to feed the fixed random into the multiply. We're going to stick any old number in there for now. Result into there, into the seed. Zero to one on the random scalar, include mix include max and min. Okay, that now let's get a gradient. Feed the output of the random scalar into the gradient. Now I'm going to use the colors to jumble up the, the colors of each instance here. Uh, let's just go for stuff. Let's just go for some obvious colors so we can see. Nice and contrasty, perhaps something in the green in the middle. And then we're going to take the color out into the color, firstly of our outsided object. Uh, but we can also use that to fill the gap of the inside so they now share the same color which might soften the blow when you consider that we don't have any shading on these insides obviously pick some nice colors but what you could also do is go for the color tool and in between that that the, and in between the gradient and the color tool you could feed that into the standard and uh, perhaps so uh, you could just darken it down or just give it a slightly different tone. Remembering to plug in the color. There we go. Okay, so say we weren't happy with that arrangement. This is why we've got the multiply node. Again, just stick in any old number and it's just uh, just a case of playing around with figures until you're happy with a uh, uh, a result. And you'd be hard pressed to find any nice result with those colors, but uh, you get the <laughs> you get the idea.